Good morning to you on this Tuesday morning. I'm excited that today we are going to begin to look at Paul's letter to the Galatians. And I pray that these studies in the next weeks or however long it's going to take to get through Galatians will be a real blessing to each one of us. So today we begin with the greetings and introduction, the first five verses of chapter one. Paul, an apostle, not sent from men, nor through the agency of man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me, to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, so that he might rescue us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forevermore. Amen. It doesn't take Paul very long to get to the, the core of the gospel. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age. That's the whole point. Jesus died on the cross to rescue us from sin, death, the devil, and to grant us life, to rescue us from this present evil age. If the age was evil when Paul lived, it's even more evil today. We just see it everywhere, all around us. So many need to be rescued, pulled out of darkness. Even those that are in churches, so many, as we'll see, are following a false Christ, are not following the true Christ of the, the gospel of the Bible. We'll see that in days to come. They've been pulled away by strange doctrines and teachings. But Paul here also reminds us that he is not a self-appointed apostle, he's not a self-appointed minister, as there seem to be many these days. Paul, an apostle, not sent from men, nor through the agency of man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Remember, Jesus met Paul when he was still Saul, of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. Paul was, Saul was out there going to um, bind up Christians, put them in jail, execute them. He was fiercely fighting against Christianity when he met Jesus. Jesus changed him, gave him a new name, gave him an apostleship, and Paul from there became one of the founding fathers of the early church. Grace to you and peace. What a beautiful greeting that is. We've discussed that before. Paul uses these words so often. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. How we need grace, how we need peace. And we can only get it through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only one who can rescue us from this present evil age, who can rescue us from sin, death, the devil and hell, and give us life eternal. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you as we begin this day. We come in through your gates with thanksgiving into your courts with praise. We thank you for a brand new day. We thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you, Lord, for the Bible. We thank you that as we begin Galatians now, that we know that you will pour out your spirit upon us and you will lead us and guide us through these coming weeks. Lord, as we read your word day by day, may it strengthen us. May it, Lord, just strengthen our faith. May it strengthen our understanding. May we grow in the wisdom and knowledge of you. And through that, may our light shine even brighter. Lord, we want to be good ambassadors. We want to be good witnesses for you, bringing in the truth to all people. May your light shine through us. May your spirit work through us. Lord, help us in this present evil age to live above this world, to live walking with you, walking in the spirit, not in the flesh. Lord, help us. We offer ourselves anew today to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. That is our reasonable service. We pray that you transform our minds, renew our minds, so that we would be aligned with your will. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for our governments and all in authority, as your word directs us to do. We pray, Lord, that you would just give them wisdom and understanding in these difficult and dangerous times. We pray for the Ukraine. We pray for an end to that war. We pray, Lord, that you would defeat the enemy totally. We pray, Lord, for those who are suffering, and there's so many that are suffering around the world, not only through war, but through natural disasters, through man-made disasters. We pray, Lord, have mercy. We pray, Lord, for those in Victoria who are suffering in the floods right now. It just seems relentless all around the world. There's suffering and pain. 
which makes us even more, Lord, look forward to the day when you shall return in your glory. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Until that time, Lord, may we be faithful to you. We commit our lives to you and you today. We ask that you take us by the hand and lead us. We pray for the sick and the dying and all who are in need. We pray, Lord, for those who care for the sick. We pray for those who care for the dying. We thank you for them. We pray, Lord, for our doctors and nurses and hospitals. We pray, Lord, for all who are in um, caring professions that are out there helping people. May this day, Lord, they feel your blessing upon them. We thank you, praise and worship you. We commit ourselves to you. And now we join together in praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.